Mr Chairman, for the last time this year. <laughs> a graduation is a formal ceremony, uh, a rite of passage that marks the transition of one phase of life to another. But more importantly, it's an opportunity for students, families and friends to celebrate. Celebrate what we've been doing all afternoon and I know is what we will continue to do when the formal proceedings end. It will not be long before you're in that tent. <laughs> now, after today, some of you will continue with postgraduate study. Others will step into the world of work. Regardless of the path you've chosen, you're all now graduates and alumni of SOAS. You'll always be part of the SOAS community. One of the defining characteristics of SOAS is our strong sense of community. That comes from identification and a shared emotional connection. It means we talk about we and us and not I and me. And the members of that community obviously include the students and the staff of the school, but they also include the honorary members of the school. And I'm very pleased that we're welcoming Professor Diana Eck back to this community today. And as members of an academic community, we obviously place a lot of stress on academic success. And we're celebrating that today. People have got brilliant degrees and we heard the wonderful PhD theses that our students have done. But for me, our sense of community is underpinned by a wider range of activities in SOAS. And I just want to mention a few of those. And I've long believed that one of the things that makes SOAS students and alumni special is their determination to make a positive impact and difference on the world. So, for example, LLM student Natasha Latif founded a pro bono initiative for women's rights run by volunteers from SOAS and other universities. The group conducts legal research and offers training on women's rights under Islamic and international law. They've successfully developed a litigation model of gender equitable Sharia based arguments for Afghan lawyers, which enable lawyers successfully obtaining divorce for cases of domestic abuse and reduce sentences for adultery and rape. This is something that's done voluntarily for free. It's initiatives like that that seem to me to set SOAS graduates apart from the rest. There's another innovation this year you'll have noticed by SOAS alumni, uh, students and alumni, Muslim and non-Muslim, is the Ramadan tent. It opens every evening for iftar or the breaking of the fast, during this, the holiest month in the Islamic year. The time when, if you believe some newspapers, our diverse city is riven with tension and distrust, our students are proving the opposite. People of all religions, are flocking to the Ramadan tent to talk and share. It's in the precinct, so do visit it after the ceremony. And right now, actually literally as we speak, which is why one of the co-presidents isn't here, because she's teaching one of these classes, we have 100 teenagers from London families with no prior history of attending university are getting a taste of higher education, SOAS style, through the summer club organized by our excellent students' union. Volunteers from amongst our students and staff are running courses like the Anthropology of Food, Middle Eastern Politics, World Literature, Knowledge and Power, and obviously non-European languages like Swahili, Hindi, Chinese and Arabic. And these are just some of the stories that make me incredibly proud. They highlight the real impacts our students make when they're students, and I know they'll carry on doing that when they go out into the world. So what does it mean to be a graduate of the school? Well, you've already heard that by becoming a graduate, you're joining a worldwide family of 50,000 alumni, most of whom are still in regular contact with us. We've got authors, philosophers, musicians, TV presenters, filmmakers, comedians, restaurant owners, my favourite, chocolate makers, <laughs> diplomats, journalists, MPs, criminals, <laughs> managers. Managing directors, human rights lawyers, political activists and academics. You name it, and a SOAS graduate has probably done it. <laughs> now many of our graduates enjoy giving something back to the school. Not just money, but also time. Uh, we have a take an alum for coffee scheme, for example, which puts current students in touch with their wonderful network of alumni for insights and advice about the wealth of the different career paths they followed. And in April, we held our fourth telephone campaign during which current students phone up alumni. This year, we phoned up the UK, uh, Europe, um, and America, and they were very generous. And that means that we can fund scholarships for talented local students from disadvantaged backgrounds, hardship fund for international students, and a variety of student-led projects. So 
please don't let your association with the school end today. Become an active alumni, become a mentor, visit us, stay involved. And if you don't do anything else, please carry on telling people how what a great time you had at SOAS and suggest that they should come as well. <laughs> You're graduating at a time when austerity rules in Britain and many parts of the world. We all face challenges, but SOAS is in good financial and academic shape, and just to be competitive for a moment, in much better state than most universities. We're carefully planning our future. We're working towards our centenary, which we will celebrate in 2016 and 2017 on the grounds that if you've got a good excuse for a party, you might as well spread it over two years. <laughs> and we'll do that in proper SOAS style, and we'll do that not just in London, but also around the world. This year, we gained the lease of the North Blocker Senate House, and through consultation with staff and students, the design concept's been developed. We're poised to begin refurbishment. When it opens in September 2015, the building will offer state-of-the-art teaching, research, and student services. It means, and I think this is important, that SAS will once again be a single-site campus with all the energy, intellectual curiosity that defines our community concentrated in just a single vibrant precinct. That's the perfect launch pad for our second century. So thank you, students, for your feedback during the consultations on the Senate House. Do come back and see the campus when it's in its new state. But much more important than that, thank you for your contribution to the life of the school while you've been here. The school's only as good as its students, and as the staff here know, and the parents and family know, our students are the very best that there are. So thank you so much. Thank you.